it was for. Let's bring back in Amala uh, and Mikado. You know, Amala, this uh, Twitter lawyer, Vijaya Gotti, and Rogan talked about her last hour, you know, she was the one who was supported. She's a lawyer. She supported uh, squelching the Hunter Biden story. And then she's also the one who was apparently crying at this meeting earlier this week, this all hands on deck meeting. I wonder why she's crying. Oh, yeah. I think I can speculate here and say she's crying because she's losing a big, massive amount of power that she had at this platform. And, you know, all of this is just about narrative and propaganda. And Twitter has been really good at pushing their narrative and propaganda up until now, because now we have Elon Musk coming in and challenging all of that. And they're scared to lose that. Uh, people should look into the amount of influence that these big tech companies have, like Twitter, like Google, like Facebook. They can quite literally influence everything that you think think, all the news that you see, the way that you vote, and they can do so in a way that you are completely unconscious of it. And they have people working at these platforms to do exactly that day in and day out. So people truly have no idea how much these platforms can truly shape everything that you think and feel, and they absolutely do not want to give up that power. No. Well, Mike, the, the Media Research Center and Free Speech America a part of the Media Research Center, they have this thing called Censor Track, and they, they found over 640 cases of big tech censoring people talking about the New York Post Hunter Biden story in 2020. They claim uh, there are specifically 140 cases about that, another 500 examples of bans, deleted content, or other speech restrictions placed on anyone who criticized President Biden or his family on social media. That includes the Heritage Foundation, Ted Cruz, the Washington Free Beacon, Babylon Bee, and even Sebastian Gorka, who's here on this network. I know you see the dangers of this kind of one-sided form of censorship. Yeah, you know, there's a Supreme Court case, ironically from California, but a generation ago, and it's the Pruneyard decision. And in this case, it was the 1980s, and towns everywhere were getting this new thing called the shopping mall. And you had a town that said, well, we don't any longer have a public square. This is all private property. And it's totally OK for the shopping mall to prohibit any free speech, any leafleting, passing out flyers. And the California Supreme Court said no. They said, you know what? You can't enter a world where, you know, there is no capability anymore for anybody to speak in a town square. All that's left is this new thing at the time, a shopping mall. And you can't allow private companies to censor speech in these very important public fora. And I think that's the world we're, that, we're, that we're entering. Almost all speech now is conducted online. Almost mm -hmm. all speech is conducted through these big platforms. Every American, right or left, should be questioning who is, who is operating this. Are they censoring somebody today? Are they censoring one party today? Tomorrow it could be you. It's true. It's true. We got to have this honest, open dialogue if we want to move forward as a country. Our thanks to our panel, Amala Epinobi, Rogan O'Hanley, and Mike Gatto. And Mike, uh, be honest with us. I know you're a liberal. Are you losing Twitter followers? <laughs> you know, the irony is I gained a lot in the oh, last because, couple days. <laughs> because you don't have all those bots in your feed and you're, you actually make some sense. So that's probably why. Great to see you, Mike. And thanks again to Rogan and Amala. Thanks, guys.